Last time on 4x4 Garage, brought to you by Real Truck, we got the new suspension under this 1988 Ford Bronco, replaced the ignition system, and installed our new wheels and tires before having to vacate our borrowed work bay. Now we're back at SEMA Garage and it's time to regear the front and rear axles, install a completely new exhaust system, and replace all of the brakes. 4x4 Garage, brought to you by Realtruck.com. Pop those manifolds off. Need to be like 7.5 to work on this thing now that it's lifted. What are the odds these manifolds are actually gonna come off without broken studs? Anyone guessing slim to none? We'll make life for hour from now, Christian, a little easier and label these. Something tells me someone's had these off at one point recently because all the bolts actually broke loose. All right. Here we got the factory manifold. You can see right there, we got a little crack. It's already kind of extended up here to this bung. And time would have gone all the way across. That's a good source of an exhaust leak that you'd be hunting down and driving you crazy. So these new Flowtech performance headers aren't gonna have that problem. It doesn't help that whatever I'm got my face stuck in is like just exuding raw gas. Ah, come on. I got two of the bolts in finger tight. That's gonna hold the gasket while I get the rest of the header bolts in. And then once I've got them all kind of finger tight, I'll start running them down incrementally from that inside on the number eight cylinder. The best is when you go home at night and take your shirt off and it looks like you fought a bear and just barely won. All the sharp steel you're laying on. Yeah. This is about all I'm gonna do on the gearing for this vehicle. I mean, I can set up gears, but the key is to know your limitations. I'm slow at it. Some people can just solve a Rubik's Cube, and, and for me, it takes me a while. I gotta sit there and think about it. So we're gonna get the ring gears all started here. We'll cinch them up, torque them to spec, and then I'm gonna hand this over to Cody to finish uh, setting up the gears while I get to getting on the exhaust. The one thing we kind of realized, the starter on this has been dragging. So before we cover it with a brand new Y-pipe, we're gonna pull the factory starter and replace it with the Darlast cold unit. That's tight. I always like to take a video of the brake hardware before I disassemble it so it goes back together the same way. These bolts are barely on. No wonder this thing's all gummed up. There we go. I'm too impatient to sit there and watch that drain at that rate. I tell you, with 37s and a decent V8, a little bit of high quality lube's gonna go a long way in this thing. Yep. Give it a little, here, it tap it, tap. It went. We got the factory shafts out of this thing, and they're pretty worn on the splines, actually. Starting to get eaten away. We had a lot of play in the factory pinion and uh, carrier, so we're probably gonna play it safe and, and order some new aftermarket alloy axle shafts. It'll be better for the big tires in the V8. Got it? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of <laughs> extra material <laughs> milling around in this thing, gritty. Wow. Yeah, okay. This was not in the best of shape. Definitely, uh, this is not time wasted back here. Okay, we've got the 8.8 all disassembled. We were careful to keep the carrier shims on the same side they came out of. So when we're going to do a baseline on the new carrier, we've got something to work off of. Uh, we're not starting over from scratch. 
The pinion that came out of this thing, it had 355 gears in the back and 410 gears in the front. That might explain why the gear teeth on the back were so hammered. Maybe someone pulled the T-case lever at some point in time, don't know. We knocked the pinion race out, and when we did, we found a little errant piece of metal back there. Maybe that was the factory shim, I don't know. It's not really ideal and probably not supposed to be there, but there was a ton of metal shavings and stuff and junk floating around in there, so a service was definitely in this thing's best interest. We've got our 488 ring and pinion we're gonna set up. When we get the pinion depth all set, we're gonna press on our bearings to the new Eaton True Track, get our backlash and everything all dialed in and run a pattern and hopefully we're good to go. So, gonna get our stuff in gear and get to re-gearing. We just keep finding more and more stuff inside of this rear end. These are what they made to be shims for behind the race inside of the rear end, and that's goofy. It won't work. <laughs> these are the axle bearings. We had so much metal floating around in the diff here. We're gonna change these. Also, it's just good practice. You're this deep in the axle, change the bearings. It's no big deal. Uh, there's a little attachment that goes on a slide hammer to get these out very easily, which naturally is at my house two hours away. So in lieu of the proper tool, we've got a big old piece of tubing. We're just gonna knock it out from the other side. Oh yeah, spring loaded. What we're gonna be doing is setting up the pinion depth. When you don't have a pinion already in it, you've gotta find out what your nominal pinion depth needs to be. So basically you're going from the center line of the axle to the top of this pinion gear. Ford makes it real easy on us. A lot of other people, you'd have to do a bunch of calculations here and figure out this and that, but Ford provides you with the measurement from the top of your housing to the top of your pinion. So we know that to be 4.420. And then we're measuring with a piece of 1 8 flat stock, and it's 0.140. So if we just add both of those together, we know that the measurement from the top of our flat stock to the top of the pinion should be 4.560. And we can change that by putting shims, not some random pieces of metal like they did, putting shims that they provide to get the pinion height correct. It's pretty good right there. All right. So that's a good place to run a pattern. I don't know much, but I know that. Action chucks. Need the shims, too. Yeah. Oh. So use some of this ochre yellow mark up one side's drive and one side's coast. So the heel and the toe. Very tight. Very tight. We get the gears put in here. We ran a pattern and we need to increase the backlash on here. It's too tight. So we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna increase the shim stack on this side and reduce it on this side to get the ring gear to move over. That'll give us a little more play. Once we get that done, we'll put it back in, run another pattern, see where we're at and assess from there. It's like a car game at Chuck E. Cheese, just so easy to turn. More shims, Captain. I came in here yesterday and I was finishing up a couple of things while the camera crew was out. I tried a couple of different options on the pinion shims and uh, I eventually found a real good pattern here on the ring gear. You can see that the pattern is on the center of the teeth on the coast side and on the center of the teeth on the drive side. Next steps, we're gonna throw the axles in, then we're gonna throw the C-clips on, and then Detroit True Track has a lock that goes in here and it keeps the axles retained, and then we can move on to the front. Let's get one of those through there.
This cover's gonna add a little bit of capacity. So we're gonna start off trying to put two of these in here. The Sam's Oil's great stuff. I mean, it's just awesome. It's 100% synthetic, high quality. The center section is now installed in the TTB front. We have to do a little bit of backwards motion now since we needed this to drive in two-wheel drive form. We can make it four-wheel drive now that the front axle is back together. So we're gonna pop off the rotors, take the spindles off, we can install the axle shaft and then put it together for the final time and fill the diff with lube. We've got the Flowmaster exhaust hooked up to the Flowtech headers. And back to the cat here. Now it's time to get the muffler in place. It's a nice Flowmaster welded unit. And then we've got a tailpipe that's in two pieces. Yep, we're on the floorboard. Can't go up any higher. So we're gonna just angle this down. Put the drive shaft in and then make sure we've got enough clearance between the muffler and the drive shaft as the suspension compresses, that we won't have any interference issues. It's gonna be about right there. That's a good fit with the lines of the Bronco. It comes right to the edge. Well, the last thing we have to do is hook up the new Duralast Platinum battery. We took off for the night and left the key in the run position and drained the old one. So we took the opportunity to do a major upgrade. These Platinum batteries are an AGM. Ooh, hoo, hoo. fingers crossed it all works. Okay, time to take it out for a test track. For a speed bump with the new suspension. Oh, not bad at all. Here we go. Oh, that's so much better. Just right away. The torque multiplication of those 488 gears with these 37s. It's even better than the 355s with the stock tires. Nice and smooth over the bumps. The exhaust note is way nicer. It was obnoxious before. One thing we do have to address, this transmission, this AOD four-speed transmission, it's slipping badly now. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I'm following Cody, and in the bed of Cody's Nice classic Chevy step side is the brand new Gear Star transmission we're gonna get to next time. So that's going to be a much needed upgrade. I mean, the interior still, we still have to do something about these seats. I don't dare put any weight on the back raster. I think I'm gonna go tumbling into the back. So one of the things we're doing here in this test drive, we're listening for squeaks and rattles and, and I'm not hearing any of that. It's really good and solid. But also one of the things we're doing is we're heating up the lube in the rear axle for the new ring and pinion so we can do a proper break-in. You want to get the rear up to operating temperature and then park the vehicle, let it completely cool, and then maybe do that one or two more times before you do anything hard or abusive with it. It's just good practice. That's pretty much it for this 88 Ford Bronco for now. We're gonna put this one on pause for a little while while we continue the mechanical shakedowns. Make sure it's perfect in every way before Overland Adventure happens in October. Next time though, I'm gonna do a project that's near and dear to my heart. I've got a classic Jeep Cherokee that needs a repower badly to make it reliable enough for my wife and family to drive. I think you'll like what we're gonna do to it. <laughs>